The following program is paid for by Don Gartner Ministries. What is your righteous cause? What is God's righteous cause? My, my righteous cause is to, to push the kingdom, to advance the kingdom, to bring attention to God's direction, to bring attention to the will of God. To our hearts and speaking to our minds. Amen. Verse 34 from the Amplified Bible translation reads this way. My covenant will I not break or profane nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Too many times men, they alter the things that go out of an individual's lips. They alter the thing that go out of their lips. Amen. They're quick to change their word. They're, they're quick to break their promises. But God is faithful. God bless you, man of God. God is faithful concerning his promises. And it doesn't matter how things look. It doesn't matter what people may say to you, but it's very important for us to identify what God has said to you, what God has released to you, whether he said it prophetically, whether he has said it through his word, whether he has said it prophetically through a dream. You have to hold on to what God has said. He said, I will not alter the thing that have gone out of my lips. If God told you and gave you a promise, just because it didn't come to pass today, just because it didn't come to, come to pass two months, in, in a two-month time period, or six months, even a year, even three to five years, believe that God's word will come to pass. God told Abraham that he was going to give him a child. That child did not come right away. And too many times we, we get involved with, with God's will. We put our hands in the work of God and try to make things come. God, you, you're moving too slow. Sarah sent her handmaiden in and convinced Abram to go in and lay with the handmaiden to bring the promise of God to pass. God is faithful. If God said, I'm going to give it to you, I'm going to give it to you. Don't worry about it. He's going to do it legal. Amen. He's going to do it right. There's no flesh going to get involved. Listen, too many times we try to push the faithfulness of God and try to, well, God, I know you're faithful, but, Lord, I want to help your faithfulness out. And what happens is we get the Ishmael's. We get the works of the flesh, the rewards of flesh, the results of flesh. No, we want the Isaacs. Are you hearing me today? We want the work of God. We want the promise. We want the blessing. I said we want the blessing. And we have to trust God to be faithful to us. He's faithful. Trust God. Be patient. Be consistent. Just stay in a place of waiting and worship. It's hard to do. Is it? This is an easy message to preach. But it's a, it's a, it's a message of application. Trust the Lord. I said, trust the Lord. Look at Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verse 10. It says, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Hello, somebody. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord that has mercy on thee. Says the Lord that has mercy on thee. I said, says the Lord that has mercy on on thee he says for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but my kindness shall not depart from thee the kindness of god is stuck to you 
the peace of God, the covenant of God is on you. It's stuck. It cannot be separated. Nothing can separate you from the kindness of God, from the covenant of God, from the peace of God. God's covenant is with us. The only way the covenant of God will not be with you if you walk away from the covenant. If you walk away from the peace of God, if you walk away from the kindness of God, and even in that, the kindness of God will continue to pursue you. The Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn you unto me. The Bible says we love him because what? He first loved us. You have a dream. You have a goal. You have a project that you're working on, and you're believing God for help and assistance you believe in God for resources you have lifted this thing up before the Lord and you have not seen anything to avail what's taking place there's some alignment that needs to take place before the manifestation of God's covenant there must be an alignment. An alignment consists of repentance. To change your mind, change your thoughts, change your actions, change your behavior. Bring it in a conducive behavior toward God's will and plan and word. When the alignment takes place, now the blessing can come in. Do you hear me? Now the blessing can come in when alignment takes place we must live a lifestyle of alignment i said we must live a lifestyle of alignment we must continue to be in a place of humility and humble ourselves to see what god is saying see what god is revealing see what god is instructing his kindness is there his mercy is there his faithfulness is there. It has not left you, but it must be according to God's way. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. The kingdom of God is not a place. The kingdom of God is a way of operation. It's God's way of doing things. It's a system of operation. It's the way God does things. Hello, somebody. When we submit to the way that God does things, God is concerned about his people lining up with the will of God. If we can just submit to the will of God, if we can just find out what the will of God is, get in it and stay in it, we'll always be in a place of success. I love this verse of scripture in Isaiah 54, verse 10. The Amplified Bible says it this way. For though the mountains should depart and the hills be shaken or removed, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace and completeness be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God has compassion on us. You don't have to feel rejected. You don't have to feel concerned about why men are not engrafting you into their process. You don't have to feel why, why people are not bringing you into their clique or into their circle. If God is for you, who shall be against you? Let God promote you by coming into alignment. Let God promote you by submitting to his will. Let God promote you by, by yielding to his promises. By waiting, waiting on the timing and the season of God. God, there's no reproach when it comes down to seeking the blessings of God. I said, there's no reproach. Men want to reproach you, but God will not put you in a place of reproach. If you seek God, seek him, and you shall find him. Knock, 
and the door shall be open. Amen. If you would just call on the name of Jesus, he will deliver you. His kindness is there. His mercy, his compassion is there to be released at all times. God is faithful to us. I said God is faithful to us. I said God is faithful to us. You know, God, he's a God of truth. Meaning that he cannot he cannot deceive you. He will not and cannot deceive because he is the God of truth. And he will always speak truth to you. So when you stand before the Lord, God is going to speak truth to you. He's going he's to love you and he's going to challenge you to make adjustments to come into alignment according to his will. Because he's a God of truth. When he looks at you and he sees things out of order, he speaks truth in love and compassion and mercy. I say he speaks truth when you come before the Lord in prayer. When you come and lift up your hands, truth is released to you. And truth comes to break things off of you. Truth comes to break the strongholds, break the chains, break the disorder, break the dysfunction, break those mantles of wickedness and rejection off of you. Truth. And it comes in compassion. And it comes in love. God cannot lie. He's a God of truth. So when he speaks, he's going to speak truth. Truth. He's faithful. You know, a true person is a faithful person. A true person is a faithful person. How do we become faithful? Faithfulness is inside the fruit of the Spirit. It's in us. That's a characteristic and an element of the fruit of the Spirit. It's in us. But it has to be developed. Just like a person would pick up a barbell and work and work and work that muscle until a burn take place, until a steam take place, and they can feel it. Today's message on Advance with Don Gardner is available on DVD and CD. Please include the title of today's teaching and offer number is shown on your screen when you call 888-529-9292. That's 888-529-9292. Send your love gift to Don Gardner Ministries, P.O. Box 376, Matson, Illinois 60443. DVDs are $10, CDs are $5, which includes shipping and handling. Today's life-changing message by Don Gardner will change your life forever when you call 888-529-9292. Order your copy today. It's something about when you already made a stand that I will bring it to pass, I have purposed it, and I will do it. When you purpose in your heart that this is the kind of person you're going to be, all people can trust you. You're reliable. Your name will go out. Are you hearing me? God can trust you. I said God can trust you. When people know that they can depend on you, they'll call you. I said they'll call you. Do you know God scans the earth? The Bible says the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro looking for someone that he can show himself strong into. Do you know in the middle of the night and even during the day, God is looking for intercessors that will, that will make their vessel available to be used in prayer? He's scanning the earth. Just scanning the earth, scanning the earth, looking for an individual to pray. Looking for someone that's saying, yes, Lord, yes, choose me. Choose me, Lord. I'll be the one that will stand in the gap. I'll be faithful. I'll be faithful. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, even when it comes down to employment, when people can trust their employers um, to do the job, do the job right, 
<laughs> that's huge. If you can just follow instructions and do the job right, the Bible says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. But it takes work to be faithful because you got to make yourself do it. You got to make yourself follow through. Are you hearing me today? I said you got to make yourself do it. Even when you're tired, even when you're disappointed, even when you're discouraged, even when you don't feel like doing it, you make yourself do it. God said, his counsel will stand. I will do it. Do all my pleasure. He says, I have spoken it. I, because I spoke it, I will bring it to pass. Did you speak a promise? Did you give your word to somebody? Have you determined in your heart to bring it to pass? Have you determined in your heart to do it? We so quick sometimes to just say something. We need to consider what we say and count the cost before we make a promise. Hello, somebody. And this generation, so people are so quick to lie. They lie because fear. And you know? They get scared, so they lie. They, they get scared because they, they feel like they're about to get in trouble or, the, or, or they need to escape out of the situation, so they lie. But if you have a relationship with God, there's no need to lie. Just tell the truth in God. He's going to get you out of the situation. God will honor more of your truth than the lie. Some people, you know, that have operated in crime, they just turned themselves in. What's the use of lying? I did it. I did it. And they, they hoping and looking for some mercy from the court. But it's really the mercy that comes from the court of heaven that we need to be looking for. God is so merciful. He is so loving. Since you're in Isaiah, I want you to turn to chapter 25. God's word works. Why does it work? Because God cannot lie. And he said he'll watch over his word to perform it. Now, you think God's word come to pass automatically? No, it doesn't. Somebody say, does it? No, it doesn't. Because the word watch means that there is work involved. That means that that's an action word. He's watching. That means that there's initiative taking place. The Bible says he watches over his word. Amen. His word shall not return back unto him void. He watches over his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. Why? Because he's going to make sure. He's watching over his word. I say he's watching over his word. Yeah, I know someone would probably beg the difference means that with God, words going to automatically come to pass. But did it come to pass in your life automatically? God will watch over his word. Isaiah 25 verse 1. O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsel of old are faithfulness and truth. Thy counsel of old are faithfulness and truth. Every purposes, every purpose, plan of God. Is faithful and true. All the counsel of God 
is faithful and true. You can rely on the counsel of God. I say you can rely on the counsel of God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, to acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways. Hmm? Lean not to thy own understanding. But acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and he what? Shall direct thy path. You know, when you do that, you're entering into the counsel of the Lord. You're considering what God has to say about the matter. And the Bible says his counsel is faithful. Amen? His counsel is faithful and true. It's faithful. You can count on the Lord. I say you can count on him. Amen? I want you to be mindful that when you submit your plans to God, Sit in his presence and allow him to talk to you. Let him talk to you. Don't be so quick to move. Let him talk to you. The Lord told me over the weekend that the key to life is understanding his will. It was real simple. He said, son, I want to tell you that the key to life is understanding my will and following it and staying in it and i was like lord that's so challenging for, for me it's challenging but if we can do it we're gonna be okay god is always if you, if you search the scriptures the scriptures always speak about the will of god trying to get men in his will trying to get me in, in the will of God. Can you get in the will of God? Can you get into his will? If you can get into the will of God, you're going to find out he is so faithful to you. And that's where that alignment comes in. That we can be aligned. That we can be true to God's way of doing things. We're going to find ourselves operating in the mercy of God. God is going to be so merciful to help us get up in alignment. He'll help us get into the things that we need to walk in. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I trust that that broadcast, that message just really blessed you. Listen, this is an hour and a season where God is talking to his people in a strong way. And we must pay attention to what God is doing in this hour. I believe that the Lord is challenging people to seek his face like never before. And so uh, knowing that the Lord is seeking and pursuing the people of God and pursuing his, his sons and daughters in a strong way, I want to encourage you to write us because we want to partner with you to see breakthrough come into your life. We want to partner to see you walk in your purpose and walk in your destiny. You know, God is expanding his kingdom. I said, God is expanding his kingdom and God wants to use you to expand the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to sow your seed into this ministry. Amen. There are many people that are watching that need a financial breakthrough. And when you sow seed, God will begin to open doors like never before. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, but remember, it is the Lord that gives us the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant in the earth. You know, God will give you power, great creativity, creativity, great anointings, great ideas for you to get wealth, to establish his covenant, to establish his kingdom in the earth. And as you begin to sow a seed, there's creativity that will be released to you. There's a harvest of blessing that will be released to you to begin to move in great realms of prosperity, great realms of opportunity. And I want to encourage you to sow your best seed. There are, there are at least 15 people 15 people that are watching this broadcast that can sow a seed of a thousand dollars a thousand dollars that's what i hear in my spirit i want to encourage you to sow a thousand dollars into advancing the kingdom of god church advancing the kingdom of god church or into don garner ministry i want to encourage you to move out in faith 
The Bible says the just shall live by faith. There are 15 people. I want you to sow a thousand dollars into this ministry and you shall see your breakthrough coming. God is talking to you right now. So I want you to sow your seed. Amen. The information is on the bottom of the screen and I want to encourage you to do that. This is an opportunity for breakthrough. Your breakthrough is on the horizon. I said your breakthrough is on the horizon. I'm excited about your future. Well, till next time, remember, keep advancing the kingdom of God. Today's message on Advance with Don Gardner is available on DVD and CD. Please include the title of today's teaching and offer number is shown on your screen when you call 888-529-9292. That's 888-529-9292. Send your love gift to Don Gardner Ministries, P.O. Box 376, Matson, Illinois, 60443. DVDs are $10, CDs are $5, which includes shipping and handling. Today's life-changing message by Don Gardner will change your life forever when you call 888-529-9292. Order your copy today. Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier than thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people but he is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church.